chapter healing chapter healing energy healing has always been around in the old days the healing was done by shamans priests energy oh cancel energy the medicine women medicine men and medicine men for thousands of years there was a separation between the official medicine and the alternative medicine even in the ancient kingdoms there were doctors approved by the state and there were shamans who were persecuted so for thousands of for thousands of years the alternative medicine was a secret art practiced by the by the initiates and hidden from the public this has changed when the arts of yoga and the art of reiki has been released to the west in the 20th century uh, the modern materialistic medicine has good diagnostics to found to find a tumor and surgery to cut it out good diagnostics to find what is broken and then surgery to fix it there is also good diagnostics to find the biochemical disorder and then uh, the pharmaceutical uh, the pharmaceutical drugs are used to uh, to fix the biochemical problem uh, the modern medicine achieved pretty good results in certain areas but it still fails in many other areas one of the major problems of modern materialistic medicine is that uh, the pharmaceuticals help wonderfully in short term but when they use chronically they uh, poison the body and uh, cause death from side effects and sickness and death from side effects another problem is that the uh, problems of the soul psychiatric problems uh, have uh, are helped by the by the pharmaceuticals very poorly many of psychiatric drugs are addictive and many of the psychiatric drugs help only short term without solving the problem long term another area where the medicine is failing is working with inflammation chronic inflammation is not uh, can be wonderfully treated short term but in the in the long term there, uh, there is no good solutions the alternative medicine approaches this problem very differently approaches these problems very different there is a general understanding that the soul is the primary eternal cause and the body is just a manifestation of the soul there is a uh, a belief an understanding that the many many chronic sicknesses many chronic disorders start from the problems of the soul then they manifest in the body for example tumors and inflammation first all start from the uh, psychological trauma then they uh, transform manifest as a psychosomatic pains and when the pains uh, continue and the the problem of the soul is not solved only then uh, the pains manifest as inflammation or tumor so the energy med medicine believes that fixing the problems on the soul and energetic level could uh, prevent and heal some of the chronic problems there are sicknesses which are treated better by energy medicine and there are sicknesses that are treated better by uh, by materi material medicine for example uh, most of modern energy healers still go to dentists and use their help to treat the teeth because because this is the area where the material medicine is better also in the modern society some bacterial infections are really hard to treat with uh, energy medicine but and so antibiotics sometimes are to be used uh, are used even by um, energy healers to treat uh, bad infection so it takes discernment to figure out which disorders are better treated with uh, energy medicine and which disorders are better treated with material medicine disclaimer this um, opinion is considered a heresy by the official standpoint take it with discernment the energy healing is best understood best popularized by the energy healing is best known by the art of uh, yoga and reiki 
Uh, the art of yoga uses exercises to normalize the energy flow in the body and prevent sicknesses. In yoga, you learn the exercises from, from the instructor and then uh, heal yourself. While in yoga, the healing is applied to self, in Reiki, healing is applied to self and others. Yoga comes from India and Reiki comes from Japan. Yet these arts use the same roots, have the same roots, and uh, use similar concepts. Both arts were secret until they were released to the West. Reiki came to Reiki is, ba is based on Qigong, which came from China, and to China it came from India, making this path in thousands of years. What in uh, yoga is called prana the healing energy. In Qigong in China it's called Qi and in Reiki in Japan it's called Ki. So Reiki means healing energy. In addition to Reiki and yoga there are many other forms of energy healing now in the West. Popular are Qigong, Tai Chi, Ayurveda, aromatic oils, essential oil, healing touch, EFT, EFT, uh, hypnotherapy, Thai body work, T H A I body work, shamanic healing, and many other forms of healing, of energy healing, which uh, often use similar concepts and principles. The main understanding is that the health requires a healthy flow of spiritual energy. In addition to the material energy of the body, there is a non material, non physical flow of spiritual energy. This spiritual energy is called chi, ki or prana. It flows through the body and uh, energizes it and coordinates its work. The physical health problems result from the distortions in energy flow. The energy flows through the body in many directions and dimensions. The main flow is from top to bottom and from bottom to top. There are also transdimensional vortexes of energy which are called chakras. The central cha chakra is the heart chakra. Uh, that vortex goes from the heart forward and from the heart backward. There are three major chakras below the heart chakra and the lowest of them is the root chakra which is uh, corresponds to the place of the end of the spine. Above the heart chakra there are three major chakras, the top one which is, it corresponds to the top of the head. Each of the chakras governs certain body functions uh, and also certain spiritual functions and certain uh, social functions of the, of, uh, of the person. They also connect the person to certain dimensions. Each chakra uh, is characterized by certain color and frequency. The root chakra is characterized by the red color and the lowest frequency. And the top chakra, called crown chakra, is characterized by the highest frequency and violet color. And this has physiological reasons. The brain and spine consist of nerves which conduct the electrical impulses. So the distance between the brain and the end of the spine is the longest. So the oscillations so the, the electrical oscillations coming from the brain to the end of the spine and, and back take the longest time. That's why the frequency of the root chakra is the lowest. So the frequency of each chakra roughly corresponds to the distance between the head and the corresponding vertebrae. Although the electric oscillations are physical, they resonate with the spiritual frequencies which are non-physical and cannot be measured by the modern devices. Yet conscious, uh, yet conscious beings, humans, yet humans as conscious beings can connect to these uh, oscillations on the soul level and do the healing work on the soul level. So the energy medicine, energy healing cannot be separated from the idea of spirituality. And by the nature is non-material, non-physical and operates on the level of spirit and God. In the West, the energy healers uh, enjoy much protection uh, by the principle of freedom of religion. The energy healing is essentially a miracle which is, utilizes a spiritual work 
by the healer to normal uh, to remove the blockages and normalize the energy flows. And when energy flow is normalized, the pains go away, the inflammation often goes away, and the health returns. In Reiki, the healer uses uh, uh, the hands to move the energy and normalize the energy flow. In yoga, you use uh, exercises and move your own body to help the energy flow, and much emphasis is uh, on uh, breath work. In FT, there is a combination of simple physical activity and repeated uh, affirma healing affirmations. In addition to healing, which can be rationalized, there is a simple. There are healings which uh, result, which are result of simple miracle. Miracles happen, and they are well documented in many spiritual books. Although the reality often seems dark and hopeless, there are miracles in it. Many people, almost everyone. Uh, many times in their lives come to the moment when they should have died, but they are miraculously saved. In some of these cases, um, people experience near-death experiences and uh, uh, they, they become aware of the miraculous work of the angel. The angels often intervene, saving people from death. It often happens that the person actually dies, but then the angels would come and replay this scenario to make uh, to create a miraculous recovery. So the person might even remember dying, but then uh, he would discover himself miraculously saved. This is one of the best proofs that the reality is not real, that it is just a sophisticated simulation. The miraculous healings and miraculous recoveries from deaths are best examples of that. So why some people survive uh, the accidents and sicknesses and some people die prematurely? Much depends on the desire of the soul and much depends on the plan for the life. Sometimes an unexpected death is the best exit which uh, actually brings the po most positive outcome for the other people. It is decided not from human perspective, not from uh, human perspective at that moment, but from the bigger historical perspective. The decision is made by the spirits and the angel from the point of view of the development of the whole system. Thus, for example, the wars are permitted if they don't lead to the complete destruction of the, of the species. One of the examples when the death was permitted was the death of John Kennedy. If you study his biography carefully, you will discover that by the time of death, his plan was almost finished. He was very sick and was on strong painkillers and uh, psychoactive drugs. His death actually didn't stop the reforms and many uh, needed democratic reforms were completed after his death. At the same time, his uh, violent death served a strong positive lesson to the humanity and serves to awakening of people even more than uh, if he would have continued, continued uh, to live longer. Similar, a, a similar analysis might be applied to uh, some other premature deaths of famous celebrities, such as John Lennon and Marilyn Monroe. Keep in mind that it is also a choice of the soul. Sometimes it could be beneficial for the soul to change the body, to uh, incarnate in a, in a better body than it was before. So the, sto the soul might step away from the life, uh, incorporate the experience, integrate the experience, and then incarnate in a better circumstances to achieve a better result. What is tragic, what is tragic here on Earth in real time, in this time, could be acceptable from the higher perspective. The groups of wise spirits and uh, elemental entities are responsible for keeping the life on earth the way it is. Wise spiritual entities are responsible for bringing sickness to the humans and wise entities are responsible for bringing death and making the life as short as it is. It is an artificial simulation. It is unique in the galaxy. And it is valued in the galaxy because it allows much spiritual progress in a short period.
period of time. Many spirits from outside the Earth, from other planets in the galaxy, uh, would like to experience the life on Earth, and many do incarnate on Earth. If the spirit comes from another planet and has no um, Earth experience, their life usually is short, since they have trouble surviving on Earth. The life on Earth requires spe special skills, so it takes uh, several incarnations to get used to the life on Earth. So the spirits that come here uh, from other planets usually are not adapted for life here and they seem like they are not from this planet. And they often die prematurely. It is the price they pay for experience of life on Earth. In addition, there are teachers who are usually called Ascendant Masters. These are the souls which had many incarnations uh, on Earth achieved high level of spiritual development, achieved high power of their spirit, and earned the right to move up to the next levels of uh, creation. But they remain on Earth and incarnate again to bring uh, their power and use their power to transform, help the Earth transform in a positive direction. Jesus, Buddha, and Confucius are among the Ascendant Masters. The end of chapter healing. Chapter Meditation. Meditation is a, an essential tool for self-healing and spiritual growth. The modern materialistic society offers you many artificial goals. Money, sex, power, popularity, career, possessions, sensual pleasures. You are supposed to look certain way, behave certain way, uh, be interested in certain things, enjoy certain things. Yet, when you become old, you discover that all of that has no value. From the spiritual perspective, the main, uh, the main value, the main goal is spiritual growth. It is the purity of the spirit, the power of the spirit, the integrity of the spirit that matters. All material goals are temporary and illusionary. They are nice tools and prompts for the spiritual growth, but their value is secondary. As you get experience and mature, you discover that the main answers are inside. The life is given to you not to achieve something outside, but mainly to achieve something inside. So your inner life is of primary importance. Many modern people are trapped in their daily routine and external pleasures. They look for external approval of other people. They are busy working during the day and busy entertaining and relaxing after and socializing uh, when they don't work. And they forget about inner life. So when they become old and um, stop working and lose friends, they just discover that their inner life is underdeveloped. underdeveloped. So it is very important as you grow and develop to pay attention to your inner life. And meditation is one of the best tools to face inward and work on your inner life. In meditation, you disconnect from the outer world and focus inside. For some people, it is difficult to look inside because you, they would find there much of hidden fear, anger, and grief, and pain. So processing these negative things is one of the goals of meditation. Another goal is to connect to your spirit and through your spirit to connect to God directly. So in essence, a meditation is a phone line to God. During the meditation, you upload to the creation all your pains and troubles and download health and answers. Keep in mind that your physical health and the health of your soul are tightly linked. The physical illness which results from the psychological trauma it calls psychosomatic, is called psychosomatic. In chronic illnesses, the psychological trauma, pain and inflammation often go together. It is the case for arthritis, for the allergies, for heart problems and many other neuro neurological uh, and skin problems. 
neurological digestive and skin problems. The biological system responsible for the inflammation is called immune system. One of its functions is to hunt infections. Another function is to keep cancer under control and to constantly eliminate any cells that convert to cancer. And when the immune system becomes dysregulated, it causes chronic inflammation. In, in almost all chronic pain diseases, there is a combination of uh, pain, which is overexcitation of nerves, and inflammation. And this uh, is a self-activating, self-reinforcing circle, self-reinforcing cycle, where act active nerves um, activate, over overly active ne neurons activate the inflammatory response, and the inflammatory response uh, act closes the cycle by activating nerves. So they activate inflammation and nerves activate each other. Even the mainstream science recognizes now the connection between the psychological trauma, the, uh, the activation of the nerves and the inflammation. The mainstream science recognizes that stress contributes to arthritis, skin inflammation, and cancer. This ecological trauma is a trauma of the soul. Psyche is the soul in Greek. What is not understood by the mainstream science is the involvement of spiritual energy. The, the trauma of the soul conver is converted to the uh, disease not only chemically but also through uh, spiritual energy mechanisms. The trauma of the soul produces a negative energy, produces a negative program, self-destructive program, which becomes selfish and disconnected from the flow of the energies in the body. The negative energies block the flows and uh, create uh, negative vortexes of energy. These negative vortexes of energy are connected to certain cells through the cellular vibrations, through cellular electromagnetic vibrations, specifically through the vibrations of proteins and DNA. And these negative vortexes program the cells to, became, to behave selfishly in disharmony, without harmony with the rest of the body. These selfish cells can uh, induce cancer or inflammation or pain. Energy healing and meditation are among the best tools which help um, healing these negative energies, removing the blockages and removing the negative vortex. One of the main goals of the meditation is reconnecting of the mind and the soul. It is the inner work which integrates and um, integrates different parts of the mind and the subconscious. In the meditation, the trauma, traumatic experience is uploaded to the spirit and it becomes the part of the accumulated collective spiritual knowledge and the healing is downloaded from the spirit and improves the health and improves your health. The, efficien the efficiency of the meditation, the efficiency of meditation for re reducing the stress, reducing uh, pain and inflammation is uh, even absorbed by the mainstream medicine and accepted by the main main mainstream medicine. The nature of modern human life is very unnatural. The stress of the modern life is very artificial. The majority of living beings in the nature are not stressed out. Look at the cats, look at the dogs. They are constant reminders that the life is possible without stress. 
Yet modern civilization developed many ways to stress out a human. For many, becoming stressed out becomes a habit. People become workaholics and worry much of the time. Even when people have free time and are supposed to rest, they still find ways to become stressed out. Many watch television, many watch uh, stressful movies, uh, read stressful news and get hooked, get addicted to stressful information and activity. Meditative state is very natural. It brings you back to the natural balance. Uh, many human, traditional human occupations are balanced and non-stress. Gardening, cooking and washing dishes are among those occupations which bring you back to the balance. If you allow yourself to relax. These kinds of work could be one of the ways to meditate. There are many ways to meditate. They might look different, but the result is essentially the same. They bring you back to balance, then they bring you back to yourself, and they reconnect you with, you, with the spirit. Here I will describe a very basic meditation available to anyone. First, you need to find the time to meditate. Some people have plenty of free time and some people have no time. And those who have no time usually are most stressed out. So the shortest meditation would be like 15 minutes once a day. Most optimal timing for, the, for an active person would be three times a day, uh, 40 minutes each. The times for meditations can be subtracted from your sleeping time. This way you would still have time to work, but you will become healthier and more balanced and less stressed. If you are working usual work hours, you can fit one meditation during the lunch, one meditation after you come from work, and one meditation when you go to sleep. There are many people who meditate much longer. This would be people who are sick and uh, are working on healing themselves. There would be yogis, uh, spiritual workers, creative people, retired people, people who really focus on their spiritual development. It's not unusual to meditate 10 to 15 hours a day. Next, it is important to find a quiet, protected place for the meditation. A quiet, protected place for the meditation. In an ideal situation, you would go to your room, put a sign on your door, don't disturb, and lay on your bed. Many people use their car for meditation during the lunch break. Meditating in the nature is wonderful. As you are a beginner, it's important to avoid distractions, but as you uh, become used to meditate, then the distractions don't bother you anymore. You can easily either ignore them or get out of meditation, solve the problem and come back to meditation again. Find a position for the meditation which is best for you, which produces best results. Lying down has the advantage that you can completely and easily get disconnected and not being worried about your body at all. It is better to lie on your back straight in the most comfortable position with a pillow and uh, sometimes using a blanket so you get as little distractions as possible. The straight position is, uh, has the advantage that your body becomes a better antenna and, most, and more, is a more symmetrical resonator. So it can connect to the spirit in a, a better way. But um, lying on your stomach or your side is also acceptable. Whatever is easier for you. Some people don't like uh, to meditate in the horizontal position because they just simply get asleep, especially if they are tired. So instead of meditation, you just sleep. Merging your meditation with a nap is a good idea. Dalai Lama said sleep is best meditation. In the sleep, you also upload the experiences to the spirit and download the health. The difference is kupatsa, kupatsa, kupatsa. The difference is that in meditation, you use your intention 
to connect to the spirit. You guide yourself in the process and you bring back from the meditation the specific results. Sitting in lotus position, uh, many, people pra pra uh, many people practice meditation by sitting in lotus position or sitting on a chair in western position. The advantage is that your spine is straight and vertical and is uh, this way is in balance and, and is connected to the earth energies in a different way. Also meditating in a sitting position prevents you from falling asleep. Meditation while standing, walking, um, doing repetitive work is also possible. It, it doesn't allow you as deep uh, penetration into the spirit. It doesn't really allow to disconnect from the body completely. But the repetitive motion has its own virtues and benefits. You know better if you need to be in a quiet place to meditate. Some people are very sensitive to sounds and some people can disconnect very easily. As you become more balanced and more guided by the spirit, you will find yourself more protected and this way you don't have to uh, be all the time on the guard. So you can be easier to disconnect and trust that you will be protected. In the beginning it is important to find a quiet place. It is also a good idea to use earmuffs. Such earmuffs you can buy in a hardware store uh, for woodworkers or on Amazon. Using the meditation music is also a good idea. Very often the music would prevent you from going too deep or from sleeping, but it creates a certain vibration which uh, in the beginning helps you to disconnect from the reality and also it blocks the noises. So using headphones uh, with the music allows you to become less distracted and to focus on the meditation. Many guided meditations are available on YouTube. A guided meditation is a good beginning. It gives you certain vibrations, certain tuning. But as you uh, practice, you will, might find that meditation, meditating in the silence allows you to get into meditative state faster and uh, be more connected to your own uh, experiences and your own soul rather than being guided uh, by, by someone else. As you select the meditation on YouTube, try many ones and see which ones sound better for you and which ones um, give you better sense of trust, better sense of protection and better resonates, resonate with you. You can convert your YouTube uh, guided meditation to a sound file, mp3 file, download on your phone and be ready to meditate anytime using headphones. Just don't forget to put your phone in their airplane mode so disconnect the ringers and notifications. Another option is to use the application called Mute Ringer which would allow you to mute ringer only for the meditation time and it will reactivate automatically when, when, it is, when you are done. It is very healthy to meditate in a place with good energies and fresh air. As you become sensitive to energies, you will feel which energies are best for you. Such places could be the top of the hill, a seashore, a bank of a river, a place near a little creek, any place with a, uh, natural water. A forest is a great place. Artificial places like churches, domes and pyramids are great. Yet some other places are pretty negative. So when places are charged with negative energy and connected with the suffering, you might want to build a vault, imaginary wall around you to protect yourself from the negative energies. You start the meditation by finding a comfortable position, adjusting your pillow and blanket adjusting the earmuffs. Also a sleeping mask for your eyes would allow you to go into darkness and also helps to, to focus on the meditation. Relax the palms and put them on your stomach in the most comfortable position. You can put your relaxed right palm on the solar plexus and the left palm on your navel area. Adjust these positions to feel most comfortable. 
then focus on your breathing and uh, intend to breathe slower and um, deeper than, you, than usual. Use, use uh, your belly to breathe in and out so your belly moves more than usual. Choose an intention for today's meditation. The most standard intention, as I said, would be to upload your troubles to the spirit, get back the healing and the answers. If you have the questions to the spirit, pronounce them for yourself and uh, expect to have some resolution by the end of the meditation. That resolution doesn't have to come in words. It could be just better understanding, better peace with a question. It is a good idea to say a short prayer. In each meditation, you might uh, address a specific. You might want to address a specific aspect of the God or, or or the Spirit. You can address your prayer to the One God, to the Creator, to the Divine Mother, to the Universe. To the source, to the energy of the source, to Yeshua, Jesus, angels, archangels, a specific angel, specific archangel, specific friendly alien, specific ancestor of yours, a died relative, a spirit of your favorite celebrity. On different days, you may be attracted to different consciousnesses so do it as you feel better keep in mind from that from a certain perspective they all become one they are all united in the spirit they all are aspects of God's of, of God as you are a typical prayer starts with the gratitude continues with the invitation to help and ends with the gratitude here is an example of a typical short prayer thank you the universe for this experience, I invite your healing energy and I thank you for sending me the healing. The time from the spiritual perspective is much more fluid, so, so it is okay to thank for the healing which will come later in your, in your time. And the gratitude is one of the best remedies from stress. It, uh, the, the, the gratitude doesn't only, not only heals the trauma, it also helps you in your luck and in your work and in your daily life. Meditation continued. So you found the time for meditation, you found the space, you are comfortable, you blocked your eyes, uh, so you're in the dark, you blocked your ears, you, you're in the quiet, you started breathing. Are you actually meditating? How do you know that you're doing the right, the right thing? What do you actually do during the meditation? All what has been said so far is physical. Anyone can do it, but the next step is spiritual. You can program a robot to, lay, to lie down, to close the eyes, to close the ears, and to breathe deeply. But the robot possibly won't be able to meditate. But a spiritual being like you can meditate. So what is the secret? The secret is to make a trans-dimensional jump. Until now, uh, all the actions are physical and can be actually described in words. But as you do such a trans-dimensional jump, uh, what you feel there, what you see there, often cannot be described by words and is not a subject to uh, understanding of physical mind. So as a next step, you need to shift from the physicality, from the understanding of physical sensations, from feeling yourself from the senses to the area where you don't feel, you don't sense, where your consciousness exists, but you lose the connection to the physical world. So we are asking for a miracle, and this miracle is actually accessible to anyone. Some people disconnect from the physical world with ease, for others it is a skill which needs to be developed. What makes it much easier is the understanding that you are not alone, that you are being helped by the Spirit on the other side. 
you are being guided. A desire to meditate, a desire to shift to a higher reality is sufficient. If you get in a quiet place, if you quiet your mind, you will be helped to shift. Another thing that helps, another understanding that helps to meditate is to understand that meditation is essentially a form of a sleep. It is a sleep with intention. It is a dream with attention. It is a dream with, with intention. Dalai Lama said sleep is best meditation. What makes meditation is much easier is to understand that you go to the other side every, every night when you sleep. All you need to do now is to go on the other side with intention, with the intention to connect to the spirit, to upload your worries, to download your health, to balance your energy, and to assist your spiritual growth. Brain imaging studies and brain wave measurements show that in the meditation you reach the, the same uh, brain waves as you do in a dream, in a sleep. Only because you do it with intention and consciously, you can achieve a higher harmony, higher coherence, and better connection, to, better communication to the spirit. When people meditate, they usually go to a higher vibration, to a happier place, to better ba balance and better healing. But there are few people who drift to darkness. There are some people, those people are, are so stressed out and are so prone to depression, habitually prone to depression, that when they meditate, they habitually go into sadness and connect to the lower vibrations. So the meditation for them can become a bad trip. If you meet this trouble, look for help from someone who can guide you to the higher vibration. It can be guidance in person or a guidance through YouTube video or through uh, books or other ways. Uh, a great help with uh, guiding to higher vibration is Reiki. Reiki is, in w one of the ways of using Reiki is to guide the meditation to high vibration. A Reiki session can become an assisted meditation. So getting Reiki and learning this vibration of uh, high connectedness uh, could be a solution for those, for those of you who, can, uh, who tend to be depressed and stressed out even during the meditation. So during the Reiki session, a uh, healer places hands on your head and another time on your heart and sends a spiritual energetic vibration to your head and heart and brings you up to a healing state of, of mind. Remember this state and um, then you would be able to reproduce, reproduce it during your meditation and induce these brave waves which bring you to a higher, more balanced, more happy and happier state of mind. As you shift in your meditation to another dimension, to another side, there are certain signs which help you to understand that you are doing the right thing, that you are moving in the right direction. As you invite a communication with your favorite spirit, favorite angel, favorite archangel, um, an aspect of God, expect it to, to, to come and often it would come as uh, light which you feel, which you see inside your head, not through your eyes. It is a spiritual vibration which creates a physical electro electric waves in your brain, in the, in the visual cortex area of your brain. As you see that light, uh, move towards it, embrace it, and realize you can make it stronger. It is in your power to go in that light and make it stronger. Same relates to other sensation which you might get, like the warmness in your heart, the uh, healing uh, light in your heart, uh, the sensation in your head and heart. As you feel them, uh, and if they're good, 
embrace them and make them stronger and move in that direction. In a good meditation, your body becomes disconnected from... In a good meditation, your attention becomes disconnected from your body. As you shift in a higher dimension, you lose the control over your body and that feels like numbness. You cannot move your hands and legs. Welcome that. That is a sign of good meditation. Usually you still control your breathing. So enjoy breathing deeply and slowly in a comfortable manner and just welcome the numbness and uh, uh, heaviness in your rest of your body. When you come back, don't worry about the numbness of your body. Slowly come back. Give your soul a time to reconnect to the body and to take control of the body. Usually it takes minutes to come back and it is healthier to come back slowly. So first move your fingers and toes and give yourself time to, to reconnect. As you become reconnected automatically, it happens automatically, unconsciously, subconsciously, you would often feel an urge to wake up and, and move. So as you do, move, move slowly, don't rush. You would still ha have some leftovers of your dreams. So uh, coming back to physical life usually takes a little bit of time and practice. As you come back, use that time to uh, ask questions and get answers. Prepare your questions for the spirit in advance. And this time of coming back is a wonderful time when you're partly still connected to the spirit and partly already are in control of your mind. And this is a time when you uh, can ask question, questions and get some intuitive answers. Don't expect to hear anything or see anything, but expect to feel the answer, to have a good feeling what the spirit recommends you. There are many good visualizations which help you to get in a meditation state. Uh, many guided meditations would give, give you these visualizations. I would recommend to visualize that as you breathe the air in, you breathe in the energy of the universe, the healing energy of the universe. And as you breathe, breathe it out, pump it in your heart and uh, visualize a ball of glowing energy in your heart, golden flame in your heart. So as you breathe in, you take the golden energy from the universe and as you breathe out, pump it in your heart and grow a ball of golden healing light in your heart. And this is about it. There is not much more to do. It is uh, going to the point where you are quiet and still, when you are disconnected from your worries and your body, and trust that the spirit will come and your focus of attention shifts to the area of higher vibration where it would dwell in the spirit. Uh, release your worries there and bring back the answers, the healings and the spiritual upgrade. Many people have a hard time disconnecting from their thoughts and quieting down the worries. Uh, realize it is only for the time of meditation that you have to quiet them down. So in the meditation, if the worry or a thought uh, becomes excited in your mind, uh, don't push it away, be kind to it, just talk to it and ask it to wait until you get out of meditation. So basically put it on the side burner, put it on a shelf and uh, say to it that you will think about it later. So you don't have to think about it during the meditation, you can delay that, d delay. Uh, and clean, clean your mind. Uh, there are nice visualizations for clear, clearing up your mind. Take the one which is good for you. You can visualize washing dishes, you can visualize washing windows. I recommend um, uh, 
to visualize a windshield wiper which works and uh, removes all the all the thoughts, all the images, all the concerns which pop up in your mind. Just wipe them out and have your mind clean and empty. It takes a lot of uh, integration work, purification work to really be able to disconnect from the physical reality and shift into the stillness. In your physical, in your physical body, uh, there are several points where you can steal your mind, uh, put your mind to rest. One of them is heart, so to focus the mind on your heart. Another, another point is in the middle of the head, uh, in the area of, of the pineal gland, which is also called the third eye. The third eye. And the third point is uh, a third eye um, spot on the forehead, the place uh, between the brows, which is usually col colored by some Hindus uh, with a red dot. So the, the spot on your forehead, uh, you can focus your presence, your focus of attention on this uh, spot on your forehead. It doesn't matter that much where you focus of your attention. It is uh, what matters is that uh, your mind gets to the stillness point, gets to the balance, and stops uh, stops uh, thinking about physical, about anything. If your meditation work right, then after the meditations you would get much more energy, much more health. And more uh, amazingly, their reality would be better and friendlier to you. The, your problems would gradually resolve to your favor. Meditation is a miracle work. And the main miracle is that uh, while you quiet your mind, there is something done in the background without, in, without your conscious intervention. Something is done subconsciously to uh, help your physical life, help your uh, help with your problems. As you come out of the meditation, repeat your prayers and thank your spirit, spiritual helpers for their help. If some of your meditations are not as deep as the others, don't worry because the depth of meditation uh, depends on many factors and one of them is planetary alignment. Sometimes meditating is easy and sometimes meditating is almost impossible. You remain for the whole meditation, you remain conscious, you don't shift on the other side and you don't feel the numbness, all the, all the uh, attributes might be wrong, yet it is still help, it is still helping, it does still help to meditate, even if uh, it doesn't go fully, if you don't go, go fully into the other side. Even a partial meditation still has lots of benefits for health and the spirit. For health, the spirit and your practical life. Now as you learn about an ideal meditation or one of the ideal meditations, I realize that uh, a good meditation might, may, is often, hap often happens even without all its attributes. Uh, you might be on the run, you might not find a quiet place, you might not lay down in a comfortable position. Sometimes a good meditation might take a split second. It takes a split second to connect to the spirit and get help from there. So some humans and some, some people and some experienced meditators can meditate on the run. In ideal situation, you are constantly, 100% of your time, 100% of your life are connected to the spirit and are in the balance. Consider dolphins. Uh, dolphins are unique in a way that they always are awake and they always are asleep. Uh, their brain is divided into two halves of which one is awake and another is asleep. And these two halves take turns. So a dolphin is always conscious and always connected to the other side. So that is an ideal of 
a perpetual continuous meditator. You are always present here in physicality and are always present on the other side. Although this um, continuous meditation can be achieved only by special, ultra pure, ultra advanced spiritual, spiritual people. If it doesn't come easy, consider doing more practical stuff to shift between the meditation state and the, the awakened state. Uh, so be like a swing, like a pendulum, shift to the meditation, be in the meditation state, then shift out and be in conscious state and connect to the, to the physicality. This uh, serves your practical needs and also it serves the spirit. In the physicality, you can go in any vibration you like. You can be down, you can be practical, you can be grounded, you can be working on the vibration of other people. You can connect to the other people on their level of understanding. And then you go back to your, to your meditation and there you upload all your experience to the spirit. And you receive back the answers and the healing. So going back and forth is natural and uh, you can do it at any time and um, get your results. It takes practice, it takes commitment, and also it takes connecting to other humans, uh, other people who are teachers and helpers with meditation. Being in the presence of a teacher and a group of meditators really helps to get on the other level. Even the most experienced of the meditators still learn more when they connect to, other, to the other people. Everyone can be your teacher. Even people of lower development still can help you in your meditations and help you with uh, raising to the new level. Subchapter Becoming an Avatar. From the spiritual perspective, the purpose of life is to go through the lessons and get experience. It is not that the body has a soul, but it is the soul uses the body to obtain uh, physical experience and uses the body to achieve spiritual growth. The purpose of your life on earth is not predetermined. You define the purpose of your life. You have a free choice and you can choose to serve the spirit in its uh, desire to obtain the, the experience and uh, to grow uh, and to help the spirit to grow. Our individual spiritual growth is the main concern of our spiritual teachers. So it is a good idea for you to focus on your spiritual growth, uh, but it is your choice. As you work on your meditations and you, as you work on your spiritual growth, it is your choice to invite your higher self into your body and to, and to submit to the guidance of the spirit. It doesn't relieve you from solving practical questions in physical life, but it takes the weight of responsibility for the life direction from your physical mind to your higher self. And it plugs you as, a, as a, an agent into the work of the spirit on earth. You become a messenger and a worker of the spirit on earth. It can be called light worker and it can be, can, can be called an avatar. An avatar is God incarnated on earth. So as you connect to the spirit and become the worker of God, then you become an avatar. It is your choice it is, it, and it is an opportunity offered to you. As you start performing the the work for the cosmic intelligence on earth as you commit to this work you will you will be given more energy more assignments and more tools for more help in uh, completing this assignment you will still learn your spiritual lessons and practical lessons but in addition you'll be plugged into network of uh, the light workers who work uh, uh, the work of the spirit and walk the path which is assigned by the higher spiritual intelligence. The choice is yours and the meditation is one of the great tools towards that path. The end of chapter meditation.